Hello, everyone. To see all of your beautiful faces here. All of you that were in my beginning formation and see how you've blossomed and grown. I'm so proud of you. So proud. Um, I'm here. I'm talking more today um, on the Father Dini's uh, formation uh, talk on the um, the constitutions explained. Uh, we need to know more about why what we're doing and all of this. So I'm going to try to bring the, bring you up to uh, date a little bit today with a little bit of time today. I don't have that much to go into, but we're going to continue with it. Um, as I was sharing with you at our meeting last month, the work underway on the constitutions is going to be a tremendous help to our Carmelite way of life and our vocations to the Carmelite secular community in the church. And I underline in the church, because this is where we're going to see where the importance and the need that the church is going to have of our Carmelite vocations in the future. We can't see it right now, but it's going to be very, very important in the future. So when I say Carmelite secular community in the church, people have asked, why do we have to have these new constitutions? Well, I'm going to give you a thumbnail sketch of it. It all goes back to the Second Vatican Council between 1963 and 65. At that time, the council redefined many things in the church, including the laity. At that time, the manual developed in 1921 by the friars, at which we were called Third Order Carmelites before we were renamed secular, uh, needed to be updated. This manual needed to be updated at that time. So, in time, the rule of life was written. Now, this was in 1974, and it was written by the friars. And so, this is when we became the secular order, which is a, an intrinsic part of the Carmelite order itself, which is a very big step for us. So I want you to think about that. As time went by, Three other significant things occurred. A new code of canon law in 1983 happened, the Senate on the Laity in 1987, which produced the document on Christi Fidelis Leci, and then the Senate on Religious Life in 1986, with the document Vita Consecrata. As Father Dini stated, the purpose of the Senates and documents was to clarify and specify the findings of the Second Vatican Council. The findings of the Second Vatican Council. So it was to clarify our role as secular members. As you can see, the rule of life in 1974 came before these synods in the 80s. So, and before the new canon law also, as a result of what the Senate said about the identity of laypersons in the church, what the Senate said about religious life, especially in Vita Consecrata, number 55, about the relationship between religious and lay people who is identified with religious charism. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's us. It was found a reevaluation of the rule of life was necessary in order to respond to the church. And as Father Dini has stated so well, he said, remember, the church tells the order what the order is. The order doesn't tell the church what the order is. The order responds to the church, hears what the church has to say, and then accepts. That's who we are, that's what we do, and this is how we live. And that is the reason why we have to keep making adaptations. So we're going to keep growing with the church as the church goes. We want to accept that in the spirit of the church, our vocations, and understand how important it is 
that we are in this Carmelite secular order and our part to play. I will continue with the thoughts next time. I want to leave you with this thought right now about the coming of Advent. You know, it's not too early right now to start preparing for Advent, for the coming of the child Jesus. In fact, we don't know how many days the Magi spent searching, you know, watching, guiding, being guided by the star. We don't know how long that took. So it could be, you know, like before this time. To find our, the little babe in the manger and the little child Jesus who brings peace on earth. Yet we Carmelites who live along with the church, we hear, hear these ancient hymns and sing of him and have that longing in our spirit for his coming. So let's start preparing, not wait till Advent. Let's start preparing now for that Advent in our souls, as good Carmelites do. I don't think it's too early at all. The Lord is near. Let us adore him. Come, Lord, do not delay. And also what I pray for in this community is all of us to learn about agape love, that perfect love that can only be found in a humble heart. Jesus said, learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Let us be submissive, kind, and considerate of our brothers and sisters all sitting here around us. With humble heart, you do not think of yourself first, but others. Let us do whatever we can to help build up each other's vocations and build up a community in that perfect love and service, that perfect love that Jesus has for us. God bless you all. Thank you very much. That, that was wonderful. And now it's close enough, I think, somebody, if they'd like to lead us through the Angelus. Does anybody want to volunteer? Do you want to volunteer? Okay, go. Thank you. And now we'll go ahead and begin the main talk. And then after the main talk, we'll have um, a break. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Again, this is in the public domain. This is the internal functionings that we share with uh, China, Taiwan, ASEAN countries. That's A-S-E-A-N, grouping of countries in Asia and uh, Micronesia. And we welcome you to into our interior lives as community and share with you and invite you to walk deeper with God, walk deeper with Jesus Christ, walk closer with him as you walk closer and approach God. So it's in the public domain. There's no copyright. Don't worry about that. Amen.